Yeah, this is exciting now. Um, I honestly didn't think I'd get this far. I honestly didn't think I'd get this far. Look at that bridge, look at it. How exciting is that? Come on, come on, this is exciting. Right, I'm currently lost in a, uh, in a jungle. Right, I'm calling it quits unfortunately. Um, I got down to somewhere on that bend there, um, quite a way down, but it was just it just kept going, there's, there's brambles and nettles and ferns up to here um, and the trouble is I just don't know how far it's going to be like that so it's my fault I'm coming in the height of summer um, but anyway I'm going to call it quits there Oh hi everyone, good to see you, good morning. Um, well I'm back out on the narrow strip of uh, causeway between the Manchester Ship Canal and the River Mersey. Um, and I made it, I made it past that bit, the jungly bit around Runcorn, Runcorn jungle. Um, I made it past that, yes. And I tell you what, it was about 10% easier than the last time I attempted it in the height of summer. So, um, yeah, brilliant. It's pretty early in the morning. Um, the sun is kind of rising in a cloudy sky but I'm here and um, I feel like I'm a bit I'm through it now and it should be kind of clear going ahead so I'm opposite Runcorn Docks which is just over there the entrance to Runcorn Docks it's not very big but it's the first sight on the, the trail today and then we've got a, a, a lock coming up the second lock um, in this stretch that I'm walking today so let's crack on <laughs> The Manchester Ship Canal is a 36 mile long waterway in the UK linking the ports of Manchester and Salford to the sea over the Mersey estuary. One of the last canals built in Britain is also the only canal allowing large seagoing vessels to leave the coastline and travel inland. One of the largest feats of engineering in the world from the late 19th century period, it became a busy waterway with docks at various places along its length, and a major reason the North West was able to keep thriving as the 20th century unfolded. In the last 40 years, traffic on the canal has become a rarity, yet it remains a much-loved goliath of history, with its many viaducts, locks and some epic scenery. Flanked by heavy industry and farmland, accessing the ship canal can be challenging, but this section here between Runcorn and its endpoint at Eastern Locks has only ever really been used by dock workers and farmers. It's also the only stretch of the ship canal still in frequent use. The lack of a public footpath along this length implies a lack of permissible access to it, which let's face it is a bit of a legal grey area. But since I was a kid I've always looked at maps and wondered what it'd be like to walk along this narrow wall and out onto the grassy no man's land. So finding no signs telling me not to, today I've set out to actually take a look. Right, so this is the lock, um, and I, I guess it's a bit of a dumping ground for the Peel Holdings or whoever owns this. Um, yes, a bit of a mess up there, but look at these two lock gates. I'm 99 percent sure they're lock gates, um, just floating there. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the lock down there has been um, sealed off, uh, and it's just full of junk. Old crane there, big tyres. 
Um, so a bit of a dumping ground this lock. Um, but it's nice to see some boats and some ongoing industry over there. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. Um, and it's a bit of a walk now to the next point of interest. Yeah, so uh, just a big pile of junk, um, but you can see the old lock gates there. Uh, barely still there um, and the rest is completely sealed up with silt and mud um, and this thing here look at this this is cool this doesn't turn by the way uh, but look at that Go on, we're looking here while we can. So, a little hut on the lock. Um, very, very interesting. But there's nothing in here, um, unfortunately. It's uh, an old fireplace there. And bit of a hole in the ceiling up there. Um, it's got a good view though. You might notice um, a near constant sound of geese honking away. Um, I'm sorry about that in the background there. Um, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of them just walking around swimming in the canal, walking on the mud um, It's going to be the soundtrack to my day Although to be fair, I'm the one intruding on their territory so It's not their fault <laughs> It's annoying now I'm actually starting to feel excited now um, I wasn't before um, was a bit, I just didn't think I'd get this far again So I have done and I'm starting to sink in. It's quite exciting. It's a long walk though. I can see it unfold um, down the Mersey uh, estuary ahead of me and um, it's a bloody long way away. Run con, everybody loves run con. It's where your chemicals come from and everybody likes chemicals. Okay, so come to a bit of an interesting point now. This is Western Point over there. Um, and just up there where the twinkly lights are, that is uh, the very end of the Weaver Navigation, um, which runs all the way parallel with the ship canal down there uh, for a few miles anyway. So that's the last point of it. Um, and also the um, Run Corner Western Canal is back there as well, the end of it. You notice there's a church there. Now that is Christ Church and it's um, an abandoned church. It's not in use anymore. Um, it was built in the 1840s and it was next to the River Mersey, which is actually over there. It used to be on the banks of the River Mersey. Um, but then they built the canal behind it and they built the ship canal in front of it um, and cutting it off onto an island. And apparently it was the only church in Britain on an uninhabited island. Um, it's not in use anymore though, um, unfortunately, and the only access point is through the port of Weston, uh, so it's not accessible to the public. So if we swing around here, you can see, I don't know if you can get all of that. The River Mersey goes that way, like that. And Liverpool is over there. It's not, it's not like you can see Liverpool from it. Liverpool Birkenhead, like that. The ship canal goes like this now, it heads south, it swings south. So I'm going to have to follow that, obviously. Um, round Runcorn um, and past the lovely chemical plants over there. Um, and to, well, let's see, let's see what's happening. <laughs> Turn in the mornings 
turn Pass the square from the motorway And now the fields are just the same And they've got windmills in the sea And they've got the chemical factories And when you pass this place by night It's better than black blue lights It's rum con Everybody loves rum con It's where your chemicals come from And everybody loves chemicals Yes, they do, they love rum con Everybody loves rum con It's where your chemicals come from And everybody loves chemicals Right, so I thought I'd stop for a little bit and, and actually look at the scenery. I've been all hot and bothered this morning just trying to power through this thing. Um, and I realised I'm not actually stopping to look around. And then I got here, the third lock, and by far the most interesting lock so far. Because of these things, look at them. There's about six, five or six old lock gates. Just huge, massive things. A lot bigger in real life than they look on the camera. Um, just leaning against the lock here and I'll be going that way obviously and um, south but then my walk takes me that way eventually to the northwest um, so it's a bit of a whoop like that up towards Eastern Locks and I wonder if we can get that way at that far it's a hell of a walk I can see it from here it's a long long way many many miles um, taking us past the wind turbines over there and then I've got to turn around at some point and go back on myself because there's no way off that way. Eastern Locks is private, it's, there's high security there, um, so there's no crossing point. There's no little dinghy or ferry I can just jump on and cross the water and go back the main way. So I've got to go back on, my, got to go back on myself. So we'll see how far we can get. We might not get that far. Um, but yes, this is exciting now. Now I've stopped and going, oh, I just breathe. This is exciting now, I'm proper... I'm excited. <laughs> uh, I mean, look at the size of these things. They're just huge. Massive and there's more than six as well. There's a few more further down. I've just seen um, Yeah, amazing The dock here at Runcorn dates back properly to the coming of the Bridgewater Canal, where a series of locks took boats down to the Mersey. It made sense to build a dock here, which opened in 1791. Meanwhile, boats on the Weaver navigation sometimes had to wait days to access the Mersey at good tides, until 1807 when the Western Canal was cut, allowing them to travel to Western Point. The construction of the Ship Canal here in the late 19th century spurred a mini revival, but Runcorn's real development came thanks to the Ethelflaeda Railway Bridge in 1868, opening up the town to heavy industrialisation. Its proximity to the Cheshire salt fields and the coastline made Runcorn an ideal place for the development of chemical works, which grew to be a large part of the local economy. And even today, heavy industry surrounds the town on its watery sides. So the next stop along this wonderful causeway is this brown building over there um, and some of the area around it. That is Western Point Power Station. And it's built in the 40s or 50s, I'm not sure, um, to power the industry around here. It's, uh, defunct now it's not in use anymore but it's slap bang in the middle of this massive chemical works which stretches a mile or two down the side of the uh, canal or the uh, the river weaver um, and it's just huge huge and that's going to dominate the scene for the next um, half an hour for me anyway uh, but 
I'm not going to stay here. The next point I want to look at is just there, and that's even more interesting. So this is the Weaver Sluice Gate, um, and it obviously lets water out of the canal and the River Weaver, because the canal and the Weaver join up here, um, into the Mersey um, to drain. Um, and there's 10 gates there, I think only eight of which actually work. Uh, but this is a proper um, bit of engineering along this canal, which still obviously operates. So it's slowly starting to brighten out a little bit. Um, it's still a bit of a cloudy day. Anyway, this point here, this is Frodsham, virtually. This is where the River Weaver, uh, the Weaver navigation, the canal, and the Manchester Ship Canal all come together at this point here. So it's very wide, the water here. That bit up there is the, the River Weaver, um, heading towards Cheshire. Um, so yes, over here is uh, the, the wind uh, farm. Um, owned by Peel um, again and it's one of the largest onshore wind farms in Britain um, I'm not sure how many turbines there are though to be honest uh, I might count them as I go past uh, but yeah interesting nice and green from here on um, so yes yeah, a very different landscape now the junction of all these waterways at this point probably explains what this little concrete bunker is next to the sluice gates apparently it's a second world war relic something to do with anti-aircraft facilities. Right, so it's, it's completely opened up now. Um, it's, it's no longer a narrow strip of, of causeway to walk on. It's this wide open field. It's just a field I'm standing in now between the ship canal over there and the river. The sheep, <laughs> there's loads of sheep. I think this technically must belong to the farm over there, um, just on the other side of the canal. But yeah, this is actually why I've, the main reason I've always wanted to come down this stretch um, between the ship car and the river. Not because of the industrial side up there, although that is interesting. But I've always seen this bit on maps and just thought, what, am, uh, like, what is this wedge of land which is just inaccessible um, between one body of water and the other? Like, I, I don't know, nobody really comes down here and I just found that fascinating. The canal bends around that way as does the, the side of the river. The widest point of the River Mersey is just further up there. We'll get to that in a bit, hopefully. Um, and over there, you can see the other bank of the Mersey over there. It's bloody miles away now. You can see Hale Lighthouse, the little lighthouse at Hale. And over there, um, the airport, the John Lennon Airport at Speak. Um, but yeah, what a strange place to come to. Ahoy <laughs> there! Oh, that's what you want to see, isn't it? A ship on the ship canal. Oh, I can rest easy now. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a bit of time since I last spoke to camera. Um, I put a fair few miles behind me. Um, it's 11 o'clock now, so I set off at half six this morning. So what's that, about four and a half hours. Um, so yes, not too bad, but it's just been a bit of a constant slog. Um, so, and it's been quite featureless as well since I last spoke to you. Um, just a few abandoned buildings, little huts and things. Um, quite a lot of dead sheep, um, foxholes, but actual foxholes, not Second World War foxholes. Um, so yeah, but the view has opened up amazingly now. 
you can see over there um, Liverpool Cathedral, the old cathedral there, that sort of tower, and then the rest of the Merzestre, Merzestre. and then down there um, you can see again once more the um, the bridge at Runcorn. So you can kind of see the journey I've come on so far. Um, but yeah, it's getting a bit cold. Um, I think it's because I'm hungry to be honest with you. So I'm going to sit here, get a bit of food down my neck, and then we're going to crack on. And uh, the next stop, possibly the last stop of the day, is just down there at Stanlow Island. Loads of history on Stanlow Island. Um, and it looks like a bright red ship on the other side of the ship canal. Um, so that's really exciting. So yeah, let's get some grub. So this behind me is the River Gowrie which uh, flows from the other side of the ship canal, goes under the ship canal and then out uh, to drain into the Mersey. Over there you've got um, the refineries of this part uh, which is Stanlow. Uh, we're not far from Ellesmere Port now by the way. So there's loads of refineries around here. Um, but what I want to look at now is this island, this bit of land here with all the vegetation, all the trees on that. On the other side of the river. That is Stanlow Island. Um, and there was a 12th century Cistercian Abbey on there. A very remote abbey on this remote um, bit of land next to the Mersey. Um, so it was built in the 12th century. About 100 years later, the tower fell and there was a fire. And so the, most of the monks abandoned it and moved somewhere else into Lancashire. But a few of the monks stayed and they stayed here for quite a while um, until the 16th century actually when King Henry VIII dissolved all of England's monasteries. So, In the 18th century a small farmhouse was built in the ruins of the old abbey. And with the coming of the ship canal came the need for some extensive docks here. And four cottages were built to accommodate dock workers and their families. The island was also home to an unknown number of cats and dogs that had escaped from ships. The island has only been accessible by ferry boat from the refinery, making life there quite a unique experience for the handful of its residents. However, in the 1980s, the houses were demolished. All that remains on the island today, outside of the security fence around the docks, are some disused buildings. An old workshop, some rusty old tanks, a water tower and an old police station amongst them. The rest of the island has been reclaimed by nature, engulfed by high brambles, and is a special spot for rare birds. So I'm just walking along the edge of the island now. It's actually impenetrable, as you can see, um, all over. Um, so I'm just hoping if I keep going, there'll be a way in there and I can uh, walk properly on Stanlow Island. <laughs> Okay, so this is Stanlow Point, the very northern tip of Stanlow Island. I've just walked all the way around. Um, I've walked down there a little bit as well. Um, and it's just impenetrable. There's so much just overgrowth on there. And it's all the spiky, horrible, nasty stuff, which you just can't battle through. So I've attacked it here, there and everywhere. It's not happening. Anyway, so I thought I'd call it quits here, um, where I can see this amazing view. So down there is Stanlow Docks with that big ship there. Um, the refinery, a cooling tower, that's quite cool. And then the, the Man Manchester Ship Canal keeps going um, all the way past that lump over there, which is Mount Manistee, and um, it goes to Eastern Locks where it enters the River Mersey. Finally, the end of the Manchester Ship Canal. But I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to stop here, mostly because there's not much to see that way. Um, and it's still quite a long uh, distance to cover. So besides Eastern Locks, um, the only other crossing point uh, of the ship canal is still an active lock 
Um, and there's loads of security around there, so I'm not just going to roll up and go, hello, can I cross over, please? Because that's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> so I'd have to go back anyway. So I'm not going to bother with that. There's not much to see. Don't worry about it. So what I'm going to do is have a cup of tea on the Stanlow point here um, and look at this view. Liverpool over there and then all the way over to Runcorn where I started this morning and where I'm going to end later on today, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that is the walk ahead of me. And you know what? It's been a fantastic day. It's been a great day. I've always wanted to come down here and I can't believe I've done it. I might not have got on Stanlow Island properly, but just doing this walk and going and seeing the things I've seen has just been amazing for me. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. What can I say? It's, it's a, a challenge complete for me, tick. Um, so yes, thanks for joining me on it. So as I'm heading back um, past the third lock now, you can see the River Mersey is in full flood behind me. It wasn't this morning, it was all the way over there. Um, so it's just, I made a beautiful end to the day and the sun's coming out as well. So, beautiful. Um, but yeah, let me just say this has been an absolutely epic little adventure. I'm so glad I did it. I don't think I'll do it again. <laughs> I don't think I'll do it again, but um, I'm sure I'll remember it for the rest of my life. So yeah. Ah, uh, what a day. Well worth it. There were 19 wind turbines, by the way. 19. Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> 